Hey team, welcome back to my channel. In this video, we're gonna go over the PostgreSQL function coalesce. This function can fill in the gaps of missing data, ensuring your data is complete and unified. Let's do this. The source code for this video is available at my GitHub address. This video uses YouTube chapters to skip around. Let us dive into the coalesce function. Now the coalesce function returns the first argument that is not null. In rule number two, null is returned only if all the arguments are null. Okay, so if you try to do this first command with no arguments, you get an error. Now the second one is if nothing to substitute with, you must return null. That's a rule number two. So it returns null. Now the next one is the first argument is not null, so there is no comparing. We execute one. Now the next one is notice a null and a null. The first argument is null. We tried to substitute it with a second one, but that one's null, so just return null. The next one on line 20, uh, the first one is null, so try to substitute it with the next one. We should return one on this. First argument is null, the second argument is null, the third argument is not null. This one should return two. And our last one, notice the first parameter is null. We tried to substitute it by the second parameter, no good. The third parameter, no good. Now we get to three, let's return three. Now you're probably wondering where this one, two, and three level is going. Well, I did this. Now notice these are all nulls, 361, and that should give you 361. I think you get what it means to substitute now. Let's now look at some practical examples. Notice I'm using three columns, item ID, item name, and a price. Price is nullable. When I look at the data that I'm gonna push in there, notice on line 21 and line 25, the values are null. We will use the coalesce function. And what it's going to do is say, are you null? On this one, it won't do anything. The price is 500. But when it gets down to first aid, it will say, yes, you're null. What do I substitute that with? Well, I'm gonna substitute that when the price for camp chairs, let's execute that. That is like me putting in a 35 here. So. If it was always going to be this, then we could say 35 there. But it is possible that I change the price up here and then 35 would be, you know, not current. So we use a select statement to go get the current price of a product. Now, if this evaluates to null, I replace that one with a 10. So let's insert the data and now let's execute our first select statement. You can see here that first aid is now 35 and flashlight is 35, so that worked perfectly. Now, had I used a different word here, like imagine we said e-chairs, well, e-chairs is not in my list. Now, when I do a select price from item, notice I get back null. So this is saying coalesce price. Are you null? Yes, I'm null. Execute this statement. Do you evaluate to null? Yes, I do. Then replace that with 10. So in this example, the two values that are of type null right now, they will now equal 10. You can see that the two items, 7 and 11, now equal $10 each. Before we execute this function, write down the answer that you think these values of null will be when we get done executing this SQL statement. Now, it all begins with getting the item price, getting the item name, and then performing this stub. Coalesce says, if you're null, go try to get the value from here. Now, when we look at flashlight, notice flashlight is null. Well, that's no good. We learned if this is null, go to the next one. And then we are going to try to get the price from first aid kit. So I come down to first aid kit. It also evaluates to null. That's no good. So we go to the next step. On the third step, I tried to get the price from sleeping pad. I find sleeping pad is $29. $29 not equal null. Return 29 to price. So when we execute this right here, all of these that have null values will now have 29. So there will be one, two, three rows that have the value 29. Let's do this. 
and notice 1, 2, 3. Did you pick 29? Notice that we have a table here called TV Show V2. And in there, we have two columns that are nullable. Now, this coalesce only works for when things are null. So pretty much what I say is test for null, substitute if possible. So let's, I may have created that table already. Let's drop it, let's create the table, and then let's load up some data. Now, you can see here on record two, the Brady Bunch, for number of seasons, it is null. This is the only candidate in this whole data that is that we can use coalesce on. If I use coalesce on something that already has a value, then I get the value. On this first statement, notice I've commented this out. When I execute this, I get Sanford and Son 6, Brady Bunch, null. Now I'm going to add a column and we're going to say coalesce num of seasons for 5. So that means if num of seasons is null, replace null with five. You see here, num of seasons is six. Well, when we're, six will come in here and it'll say, hey, are you null? No, I'm not null, so let's use that. On the second one, it's gonna say, are you null? Yes, I am. Okay, put five in there. That's how that works. Let's see how this goes. So you see the output, the column I just added got six for when six was six, there was no substitute. But when there's a null, I substituted null for 5. That's our first example. On our second example, notice that we're doing the same command as above, but instead of putting 5, I'm putting in a string, a string that would normally go into an integer. Well, that's the data type problem. This right here will cause an error. You see we get a input syntax type error. And there you have the coalesce function of PostgreSQL. It just tests to see if the argument is null. If it is null, we substitute. It's that simple. If you have any questions or comments about this video, please leave them below. And that's all I have, team. I hope to see you back in my next video. Take care.